Welcome to the GCN Show. Uh, this week we are giving you science's answer as to why you ride. But we need you to tell us if it's right. We've also got a fantastic looking budget power meter, news from the Vuelta, the latest from Mark Beaumont. And chocolate voice, our man Johnny Bevan has finally started the Hope Route. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that the ongoing inequality between men's and women's racing also extends to fish. It does. In last week's Tour of Norway, Bernie Eisel won half a tonne of salmon. And in this week's Ladies Tour of Norway, there was, by our reckoning, 30 kilograms up for grabs. You'll have to stay tuned in for more. Oh my goodness, not again, please, Si. Uh, in all fairness, I'm not too sure that those winners would have been too worried about having about 470 kilograms less salmon to True. be lumbered with. Fair point, mate. Uh, we also learned that you have a 60-40% split when it comes to sock height. So 60% of you went for high socks, i.e. the Blythe formula, whilst 40% went for low. That's right, and you may well be wondering how a four-way vote, because there was, of course, also a compression sock and a no-sock option, can end up as just a 60-40 split, but therein lies your answer. But to be fair, I think your hairy ankles probably put <laughs> everyone off the no-sock option for uh, starters. Yeah, maybe, you know. uh, And again, we've learned something else this week, and that is the answer to one of cycling's enduring questions, why? Why do we ride? I think the reason it's an enduring question is probably because it's really quite difficult to answer. Well, I can think of loads of reasons why we like to ride our bikes, but to be fair, I can also think of quite a few compelling reasons why we don't like to ride. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Dan, but there's the opportunity to socialise, the opportunity to get your hands dirty, to get your hands on new tech, to smash yourself. Come on, you f f Turn those f pedals! These might be the reasons why you ride Sai, but it Some seems that once again, science has the real answer to our question. Oh, yeah. I say that because at the weekend, I was perusing one of my favourite online publications. Qualitative I, research into sport, exercise and health journal. Uh, you're a reader too? Yeah, I subscribe. Yeah. That is the one. Anyway, I stumbled across a very interesting article with the catchy title, The Psychological Wellbeing Effects of Cycling in the Countryside, an Interpretive Phenomenological Analysis. Yes. Uh, yeah. This basically tries to decipher exactly why we're seeing so many more mammals on the road, i.e. middle-aged men in Lycra. Yeah, I too read that one. And actually, the results really surprised me. They may well surprise you too. So the researchers interviewed 11 middle-aged men, all of whom have been cycling for at least two years, and cycling in the outdoors. So that's important, what they term green cycling. And they found three distinct reasons why. Yeah, number one, cycling offers challenges, i.e. long climbs, hard climbs, and long distances, etc. And completing one of these challenges gives you a big sense of achievement. And they've got a name for this side, haven't they? They do. Mastery and uncomplicated joys. Hmm. Number two, they say, is the opportunity to feel pleasure. Uh, maybe something you get less of when you are middle-aged. Uh, are you storming down country lanes or negotiating tricky or dangerous descents? Yeah, and this too has a name. It does. My place to escape or rejuvenate. Oh yeah. And then finally, number three is the opportunity to leave your troubles behind you. So kind of the therapeutic benefits of riding in the countryside. Name? Alone but connected. <laughs> You're riding a bike! I'm riding, riding a bike! You're a rider! I can't believe it! Oh, oh, we are taking the mix lightly, of course. Uh, to be fair, I haven't really thought too much about this subject before. Probably though, because like you, Si, I'm not yet old enough to really be deemed middle-aged. No. Uh, in all seriousness, though, I can relate to that last point in particular because a scenic solo ride, even if it's only for an hour or so, can really help you to clear your head. Yeah, that is true, actually. You can think as much or as little as you want when cycling. I do like that. Uh, right, we do want to know what you all think about this as well. So, we're going to ask you. This is not confined to middle-aged men, so right. you can be any age, any gender, well, we whether, you wear, yeah, whether you wear Lycra or not. Uh, what is the reason that you ride your bike for? Now, we're going to give you three options and you can vote just up there. So is it the challenge? Is it the escape? Or is it the whole alone but connected? So comfortable socialising, let us know. Yeah, and if you'd like to expand on your reasoning, you can leave those comments uh, just below this video or even give a completely different reason altogether. We would love to hear from you. We would. Now, one person I'm going to be interested to know what he says today and then what he says in a week's time is... John Bevan, chocolate voice himself. He's been training literally for months for this, for the Oat Root Challenge. It's an epic. 
Should we see how he's getting on? Yeah, over to you, Matt and John. Thanks very much, guys. I'm here on the start line. We've got approximately five minutes to go before stage one of the Oat Route Alp. We're here on the Promenade d'Anglais in Nice. And John, I must admit, you are looking lean and primed, but just a gentle reminder, okay, starts in Nice, finishes in Geneva, 896 kilometers in length, total elevation gain, 22,200 meters. How are you feeling? Um, is there a toilet around here, Matt? There is just poor salute just over there, mate. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm ready. Flipping it. In, in all seriousness, uh, this is a big undertaking. I mean, we told you back at Christmas, essentially, you were doing this. Mm -hmm. Have you managed to get enough prep? Have you done enough miles? Well, I, I can only hope so, Matt. I've done uh, done all the all the training miles, long, hard sessions on the turbo trainer, threshold efforts to try and get me ready for the Alpine calls. So uh, now it's time to uh, put my legs to the test. So you're fit, you're looking lean, but more importantly, you've got a shiny new steed. You've got a brand new Canyon Ultimate CF SLX in GCN colours. Well, that's right, a nice uh, black and red livery. Uh, we've got a power to max power meter on there to read all my uh, data. Everybody says it's uh, seven days long, 896 kilometers. So I think uh, the uh, strategy is going to be slow and steady. Ride within myself and then just see what I've got left, really. And we're going to be seeing how you do. You're going to be capturing pretty much everything, the highs and the lows for us along the way. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, follow my journey. And um, there'll be plenty of stuff on Facebook and uh, YouTube as well. So uh, stay tuned. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. We'll start Cycling Shorts this week with some bad news. And that is on the eve of the Vuelta a España, uh, the UCI announced that Sammy Sanchez of Team BMC had failed a dope test, or more specifically, had returned an adverse analytical finding. So there is a B sample still to be tested. Uh, it was for a growth hormone releasing peptide called GHRP2. And I'd imagine that is probably the last that we will see of Sammy Sanchez. He's been suspended by the team, and I think that's probably career over. He said he was totally shocked and surprised, and to be honest with you, I didn't even, I just didn't know what to think. The thing that surprised me most, it has to be said, was that he'd actually finished second in the Tour de France. I'd completely lost track of how many people had been disqualified, and he got promoted from fourth, hmm. apparently. Well, I know that only too well, so that was 2010, wasn't it? It was. The year I did it. So initially, I finished 164th, but I've been promoted to 162nd. Nice Maybe work, even 161st mate. now. Oh, well, keep your fingers crossed. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, Canyon are now shipping to the good old US of A, which is fantastic news for those people over the pond there. We've had loads of comments over the last few years, but we the have. wait is now over. Uh, great news in particular for the Crack Fox, who commented under the Boost Your Power video about size Canyon Air Road. He said, forget 50 shades of grey, 50 shades of black. Riding a bike that sexual must make the suffering a bit less suffery. Yeah, yeah, it pretty much does, I reckon. Uh, more industry news now, and Temple Cycles, who are a UK-based bike brand, are reportedly becoming the first bike manufacturer to accept Bitcoin mm -hmm. as a method of payment. So it's a seemingly particularly futuristic way of buying a very classic looking bike. It is, but because I'm not yet middle-aged, I know all about Bitcoin, so. You do, and you told me who Honey G was as well. So yep. Thanks for that, mate. Uh, right, on to transfer news now. There's some more big names being announced. Katusha, in fact, seems to be one of the bigger movers and shakers in the transfer market this year. Uh, their latest announcement is a two-year deal with none other than Sprint Ace, Marcel Kittel oh, yeah. from Quickster. A huge move for that team. And also, it has to be said, for their co-sponsor, Alpecin Shampoo. Yeah. They must be absolutely well, over the moon. Well, about. probably the best sign they could make. Yeah. Funny enough, I don't think they'd have ever signed me, Dan, even if I was no, half decent. Yeah. Uh, they've also managed to lure Alex down it away from Mobistar. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's funny actually, Katusha have come a long way, haven't they, since their early years of like a Russian dominated yeah. lineup. Uh, UAE have signed a big one. Dan Martin is there off from Quick Step. So Rory Sutherland goes there as well, uh, leaving Mobistar. And then, an interesting little bit of swaps he's going on between Team Sky and Quick Step. So Elio Viviani leaves Sky to go to Quick Step. David Dela Cruz leaves Quick Step to go to Sky. But the interesting bit is that the journalist Daniel Freib reckons that they both had a year left to run on their contract and the teams just agreed to let the transfer happen. Mm -hmm. I guess it makes sense if it works well, for yeah. both parties. Uh, what I thought was the strangest transfer of the week, though, was that of Australian track sprinter Shane Perkins. Uh, from this point onwards, he will be representing Russia, and he's hoping to wear the new colours at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. That is a bit weird, isn't it? Uh, now, 
on social media this week, did you see that Tom Dumoulin shared his indoor training pain cave with the Global Triathlon Network? Uh, they are looking for your pain caves. He forgot the hashtag, which is GTM Pain Cave, but nevertheless, here it is, a picture of it. I don't know what to say to that. No. Uh, obviously, you know, great that you won the Giro. Pink bike, mega. Pink uh, elite driver, turbo trainer. Yeah. Mm. It looks more like Fifty Shades of Pink, though, doesn't it? If you <laughs> yeah, take a does, closer it? look. Uh, but yeah. he does say he's looking forward to winter, doesn't he? And getting on the indoor trainer. And one person who has just finished riding through winter and has now landed back in summer is round the world cyclist Mark Beaumont. Coming up is his latest instalment. Uh, he's just landed in Anchorage in Alaska, having had a pretty tough week in New Zealand. Yeah. Hello, GCN. Quick catch up from New Zealand. So um, it's day 45 on my attempt to get around the planet in 80 days by bicycle. And I'm still bang on schedule. Had a massive push for the last three, four days in Australia. Final day was a 280 miler and that was in the back of two 250 milers. So um, flew to NZ, which puts me half a day ahead of my 80 day schedule. Pretty cold down here. The first four hours and the last four hours of the day is night riding. I was riding along with uh, ice on my jacket this morning. Uh, I'm about to ride into the night again. It's going to be dark. It's absolutely beautiful. Come through uh, Queenstown and near Wanaka today. And um, yeah, one of the most beautiful days riding on the whole trip so far. But uh, it's winter down here. It's cold. So 16 hours in this is uh, tough going. Hopefully get up New Zealand in about five days. Five days and then um, fly back to the Northern Hemisphere where it's summer. So, yeah. Keep following, let's see how it goes. For Tech of the Week this week, we're going to hand over to Mr. John Cannings. Thanks guys. Okay, some big news this week. The already very popular market of power meters has just been landed a new model. This from power to max is the NG Eco. This is a sub 500 euro power meter, incredible. It measures total power, not just single sided, and it's accurate to within 2%. It's always been the idea of the founders of Powertomax to launch a sub 500 euro power meter. It comes complete with cranks and chain rings for that 490 euros. And that is very cool. Now, have they cut any corners to get below 500 euros? Well, it doesn't look like it. The big brother, the NG, is accurate to within 1% and measures left, right, as well as pedal smoothness and uh, torque, for instance. You, though, can, for a small cost, upgrade the firmware and you can get those metrics too if you really desire them. The battery on this is user replaceable and lasts for about 400 hours of riding. Importantly, the cadence is measured by an internal gyroscope, so there's no need for magnets or sensors on the frame, for example. Power itself is transmitted via ANT Plus or Bluetooth to your head unit. Now, some of you may have noticed the little GCN logo on there, that's because Simon actually built this himself. Coming up soon, there's going to be a video on how to, or how not to, build your own power meter. That's well worth a watch. <laughs> I think I might have just put the biggest bit of solder ever on a strain gauge. <laughs> no? One? Naught? Yeah, zero. Zero. Did you find that one difficult, Si? Apparently, it was a right-handed soldering iron. I'm left-handed. Never had a chance. Yeah, excuses, excuses. Uh, before we leave Tech of the Week for this week's GCN show, uh, take a look at this. This is the latest marginal gain from Team Sky, and it is called the Race Hub. You know what? A lot of people out there are worried about the disparity in team budgets at World Tour level. But having just seen this, I don't think there are any need to worry anymore because Sky has blown half of theirs. Yeah. Uh, if you'd like to see more details on the Race Hub, we've got a full video up on the channel for you right now. The Vuelta a España kicked off on Saturday with a team time trial around Nîmes in France, or NIM, as I've been told it's pronounced yeah. in the comments section. Uh, almost predictably, it was won by Team BMC, with Rowan Dennis crossing the line first. And that means he keeps his 100% record for the year so far. He has started six time trials and won them all, uh, they being three individual and three team time trials. An enviable record there now. Yeah. Uh, it's quite said, Dan, I did enjoy your stage preview Thanks, of that man. team time trial course. Apart from two things, first your woeful pronunciation of NIM. This year, the Vuelta will be starting outside of Spain in the historical city of Nîmes. Everyone knows that. Uh, but then also your, well, your frankly, woeful maths. Uh, a few people in the comments hey. section picked up on that. And it was completed in the year 2 AD, which makes this 
very old. Failed to do 2017 minus two. Mm. Uh, as Ricola uh, pointed out, 2017 minus, 2017 minus two, this yeah. is backfiring on me, isn't it? Yeah. Equals very old. My presenting was very clear. It was, yeah. J-Lo, high low. Uh, Dan couldn't do 2017 subtract two. Yeah, how, what is that? I don't know why I didn't think I could do it. I mean, I said it was very old, and that, that's true. Well, fair enough. 2015, 2015 years old. Good blag there. Okay, uh, stage two was run off in uh, well, very nervous, very windy conditions. Uh, we actually saw some little time gaps amongst the GC uh, riders. Vincenzo Nibali was the big winner. He took between five and eight seconds, so not a massive winner there. But he did finish on the same time as the stage winner, Eve Lampart of Quickstep, who also took the leader's jersey from the shoulders of Rowan Dennis. Now, the big question for Dennis then was whether or not he could actually salvage his reputation with a 10-second bike sketch. Let's have a look, shall we? Three, two, one, go. Five seconds left. Two, one, stop. Right, well, we've got... Uh, what, are you happy with that, firstly? <laughs> That's pretty good, to be honest. That wasn't a bad effort. I'm not sure he quite redeemed himself uh, from going out of the red jersey, but still. Uh, stage three, Nibali carried on his good uh, run of form. He won that stage, but with Chris Froome taking third and four seconds bonuses there, he actually moved himself already into the leader's jersey at the Vuelta. Unfortunately, though, Alberto Consador in his last race as a professional rider has already lost a significant chunk of time on the first yeah. mountain stage. However, he does have the opportunity to redeem himself with a 10-second bike sketch. Uh, we've got one in the bank, so stay Whoa. tuned for that. i tell you, though, who I would like to see doing a 10-second bike sketch. Yeah. Mariana Voss. She can turn Good her hand out. to everything, can't she? she Road, can. track, cyclocross, mountain biking, probably art as well, you'd have thought. Yeah. And winning the Ladies Tour of Norway. Yeah. Which she did. She didn't win a stage, meanwhile, but her, well, frankly, aggressive style of racing meant that she didn't finish outside of the top five on a stage and she mopped up a whole load of time bonuses from intermediate sprints. Uh, she clinched the overall by 13 seconds from Megan Garnier, who actually herself took a rare sprint win on the final stage. Uh, and then stages one and two won by Yolian Dorr and Chloe Hosking. Yeah, now, as we said earlier, the winner of the Most Aggressive Rider Award on each day received 10 kilograms of salmon. So I think, Si, this is the perfect time uh, for some more fish puns. Yay! I know that you love them. Oh, uh, loads yeah. of comments underneath last week's show. Mega Gary M put, enough fish puns, Si. You're giving me a haddock. Yay! See what he did there? Yeah. Uh, si also got involved himself. He put, yes, yeah, so glad someone else is into it. Salmon else, yeah. isn't it? Uh, Craig Oral, it's all getting too much in tench, but I'll always tune it in for more GC GCN. Uh, I'm surprised Bernie Eisel wasn't cycling for Lamprey. Oh, and finally, Tom Lawton, after taking the time to mull it over, I thought I'd give it a fry. You know, the best thing about commenting on that thread was it meant that every time someone else commented with a fish pun, I got an email. It was like it was like a Brucey bonus email. So that's uh, the good thing. Yeah, so like two fish puns a day, basically, it was averaging out. Mm. So yeah, let's let's keep the puns going down in the comments section, shall we? Uh, right, back to the racing, arguably more important, I suppose. Uh, in what was the Cycle Classics Hamburg was now the... What, something eyes race in I Hamburg? I thought it was still the C Classics Hamburg, no? No, it's got a new sponsor. Uh, anyway, Elio Viviani of Sky took the win. Yeah, and he was elated, wasn't he, as he crossed the line. And I do wonder whether Team Sky are going to miss him when he's gone to quick step. Uh, they won't have a top-level sprinter within their ranks anymore. And he does pick up very regular, very big wins throughout the season, doesn't he? He does. Leaving racing news now, but segueing seamlessly into... What is... Bad We don't miss Matt too much, do we? Uh, right, the Pro Water Bazooka this week goes to an Astana rider, but probably not the ones you're thinking of. It's Vittorio Brimotti. He's been at it again on the Slick Rock of America. This time, we'll have a look. He's riding up a 65% gradient. Yeah, what? You are down with the kids, aren't you? That's impressive, isn't it? It is. Looks terrifying going both up and down to me. I think he did cheat slightly by paper boy. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have done that. No, I wouldn't even try to do it at all. Uh, right, this week's viewer wattage bazooka uh, was nominated by Andy Woodruff. It goes to Joe Lawhorn. Now, he apparently cycled for 24 hours on a single speed, Whoa. but still managed to cover 404 miles. What? Uh, which How many? 404 miles. 404 on miles. On a single speed. Uh, that qualified him for the race across America and also set a new world record. 
Fair so you play. got one of these to go with it. Uh, if you'd like to nominate a friend or yourself for next week's What is Bazooka, simply use the hashtag which you see written down here. With the power of maths, we could have worked out his average speed. Never mind. 18.8. <laughs> it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's hack forward slash bodge of the week. That's right. First up, we got this from Elias H. Frank. When you're traveling with a bike and you need to carry a bike box way too far. I like that, Dan. That is a hack, I bet if you ask me. Life easier. This yeah. reminds me, actually, of a guy we both used to race with, David Clark. Oh, yeah. Uh, he actually managed to put a skateboard on the bottom of his bike bag before there were even wheels on bike bags, I think. <laughs> That's a bodge. This is much, a hack. Much jealousy as he went through the airport with ease. I think he needs to double up his coasters there, by the way. He needs some for the back, too. Yeah, true. You know. um, this one was spotted in Whistler by David Glusman. Uh, Wow, look at that for a bike ride. That's, as you pointed out to me, Sir, that's quite an expensive bike, isn't it? Uh, yeah, uh, I wouldn't bodge a roof rack <laughs> for an expensive bike. He's done a neat job, though. I mean, look, it perfectly covers the roof and shapes around it. Mm. All right, 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 right. Yeah, okay, I was about to say hack, but no, it's a bodge. This one, meanwhile, oh my word. So this is sent in by Tom Collier. Uh, he says, a death defying front end and customization weld spotted in Adelaide Airport. That is. Incredible. Look at the suspension forks they've still got on there, though. Mm. Well, you wouldn't catch me riding that. No, that was just that looks like an endo machine, doesn't it? That looks like a recipe for disaster anywhere you see a pothole. Yeah. But still, fair enough. Presumably, Thanks for sending that in. Presumably needed a pannier rack at the front, did he? Yeah. Uh, look at this one coming in from Al <laughs> McMichael. Uh, dog on a bike, coolest dog ever. That was sent in on Instagram. Which do you think the, uh, the hack is? Do you think it's the sunglasses or the... Uh, the seat. Oh, the seat, look, it's swing. Oh, no, it doesn't swing round. It's bolted on. How on earth do you ride with that in front of you? I thought it was swang around. I thought it was like a movable <laughs> dog seat on a bike. But, uh, well, I guess if you can still see past your dog and handle your bike properly, hack. You'd be in, you'd get a lot of face licks there, wouldn't you? Uh, right then, we're going to finish off Hackle Barge with this one. It's a local one, actually. It's just down the road from our offices. Sent in by uh, Sharpie T, spotted on the streets of Bristol. Where do we even begin? Uh, carbon repair on the top tube, which appears to be taped up. Homemade backward stem with cork headset cap. Homemade rack, or the world's most ludicrous cut down bars. That's the way you guys roll in Bristol, isn't it? Well, not all of us, mate. Yeah, I can see you riding. But there are, there are a few people. Do you ever get that feeling where you see someone ride past and you think to yourself, I should probably say something to either potentially save their life or, you know, save them from embarrassment or, you know, perhaps just tell them to put their saddle up or down. Do you ever do it? I, no, because I think sometimes you might get offended. <laughs> uh, right, if you would like to send in any of your hacks or bodges, all you've got to use is the hashtag GCNHack on Twitter or Instagram. Competition time. This week, thanks to our friends at Cask, you have the opportunity to win a Cask Protone helmet as used by the all-conquering Team Sky. All you need to do is click on the link in the description below to go through and enter the competition. Good luck. Caption competition time now. Your chance to win a GCN Camelback water bottle. Uh, here is last week's photo. So I give us the winner. The winner is Lee Harold, uh, whose caption was, you can't accuse the UCI of being imbalanced. See what you did there? Love that. Uh, get Very in contact nice. with us on Facebook via a message with your address and we'll get that out to you as soon as possible. Uh, this week's photo is from the Welter. Uh, it is Alberto Contador on the team presentation stage. Sai is going to get us started. You ready? El Pistolero admiring his guns. How good is that? Thanks, mate. Great effort, Yes. Uh, well, you won't be able to compete with that, but you can leave your best captions in the comment section just down below and we shall choose a winner this time next week. I'm chuffed with that. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Puns and a great caption. I'm on fire this week. Coming up on the channel this week, on Wednesday, we will show you how to fuel for stage races. And then on Thursday, we've got our top 10 cycling rivalries, but another video which I'm very excited about, our first ever collaboration with GTN. They are going to attempt to show us how to dive. Although, to be fair, I probably don't need too much help. No, I'm Matt good. does. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, Friday as ever is Ask GC Anything. Might have a special guest actually this week, oh, yeah. and so stay tuned for that. And then on Saturday, the Pro Bike is the brand new Look 785 US, as used by the Fortuneo Oscaro team, uh, which will be home next year to Warren Barguil. Oh, nice. Uh, right then, Sunday, we've actually got a double header. We've got a simple guide to Zwift, very useful at this time of year, particularly. And then I'm also quite jealous because Dan's doing some unboxing this week. And it's quite a big one, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then Monday, actually, after you've got your hands on the product and the unboxing, you're also gonna be getting them dirty in the maintenance set, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Uh, and also, I'm doing another collaboration with GTM, which I haven't told you about yet. Fracking. Uh, yeah. Mark Threlfall attempts to show me how to run faster in a 5K. I, uh, uh, I, I actually heard that you were doing this, Mark told me. He says you run like you're sitting down. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh, uh, and then on Tuesday, uh, we're back in the set for GCN Show. That's right. Ah, uh, before we go though, we've got another seriously special thing coming up as well. Have a sneak. Well, we have got a very, very special unboxing coming up on GCN. And also GNBN actually. Because Physique are launching their 2018 range right here. That's right. We're unboxing it. All of it. And in these boxes are the new products. Top secret for now, but it all will be revealed next week. Right, it's time now for Extreme Corner. This week it is, oh yeah, it's extreme. It's the Crankworks Joyride Slope Style. Here we go then, off the start ramp, into the first jump, backflip, multiple tail whips, into the second one. Landed that two side. Whoa, railed a berm there, Dan. That's what banked corners are called in this kind of world. And some of these jumps, it almost looks like he's losing control of his bike in midair and then just managing to get it back in time for landing. But he's not. Those are humongous jumps and he is landing just where he needs to every single time. What's he going to do now? Onto the wood, backflip, off the wood, tail whip turning. Whoa, he nearly cased that jump down, I believe, which is where you uh, nearly hit your back wheel. Oh my word, and he did a skid there as well. Round another berm, back to corner if you yeah, remember. Yeah, must be almost at the finish now. What's he gonna do is this big crescendo, another back flip, another tail whip. Here we go. Goodness me. Back flip, drop into finish. With a little skid. Stylish, Brandon Semenek, deserving winner there of the slope style in Whistler. Let's not hear from him. My word, yeah. talented lad, isn't he, Brandon? Well, the commentators too, I thought. Extreme commentary right oh, there. Yeah. Uh, well, that's almost the end of this week's GCN show. Before we do finish, though, a quick mention of the GCN Club. Uh, those of you who have already registered interest should have received a survey by email last week. So thanks to all of you who have completed that. The response has been quite overwhelming. So yeah, thanks for the, uh, the feedback and the support. There will be more announcements soon, so stay tuned for them. And if you haven't yet registered your interest, you can still do it on GCNclub.com. Yeah. Right, before leaving this video, please do make sure you've already subscribed. It's very simple. It's completely free. Just click on the globe. And if you have some more content, well, yesterday's video, uh, the Save or Spend Ultimate Cycling Upgrade Hacks, probably worth a watch if only to understand why I'm wearing a wig. Yeah. Or if you'd like to see me running sat down <laughs> uh, with the GTN channel with my arms up like this, click in the other corner. And if you enjoyed this GCN show, give it a thumbs up.